Here we have a 2022 Arctic Fox 1150 truck camper. It's sitting on a newer F450 Super Duty. This video was originally going to be an update to the 1987 Bigfoot truck camper that we bought last year. Fixed up and used with, with great success, I should add. And that camper replaced my 2019 Arctic Fox 990 that was written off by the insurance company due to a collision with a deer that tore the support legs off the driver's side, causing over $30,000 in damage. But the Bigfoot was sold, and this one did come in late last year, and I'm just prepping it now for its first real trip of the year. As I said, it sits on my F450, and um, this particular truck needs no modifications to haul this camper around. The uh, stock springs and suspension work perfectly fine. And it's very stable. It rides well, handles great. I have no complaints in that regard. It's a super platform for a truck camper, especially one of this size. This camper weighs 5,400 pounds with some water in it and some gear. So it's not completely loaded. I weighed it when I was coming home last year. The 990 weighed about 5,300 pounds, fully loaded. So this one's gonna weigh three or 400 pounds more. The F450 comes with 19.5 inch rims and tires. These are heavy duty rims and tires and they'll hold a lot of weight, which makes it ideal for hauling a truck camper. I'm also going to be towing my F450, pardon me, towing my Land Cruiser with the F450 on a 20 foot car trailer with an equalizer hitch. I've already hooked the trailer up, it does not hit anywhere on the tightest corners I can find, so I do not need a hitch extension. I also used the same setup with the 990, but it was a bit shorter, a foot and a half shorter, so I was wondering if it would work this way, and it is going to work just fine. The new camper is quite updated over the old one. All the trim is black. All black powder coated trim now. The paint is a gray color. At first, it took some getting used to, but I quite like it now. The windows are all flush mounted. The decals are also different now. And of course, the 1150 has more storage. This door back here and this other one up here, and one on the other side. It's much more exterior storage than the 990, but it's a bigger camper. It also comes with a newer generator. And this one runs really quiet compared to the generator in the 990. It's really quiet, quieter than the inverter generator I have. I also got the Fox Landing again. This is a superb way to get in and out of the camper, combined with that grab rail. If you're buying one of these, don't omit this option. I would suggest getting it. Also this time, I ordered an extra awning for the left side of the camper. It should be a good way to stay out of the sun no matter which way the sun's coming now. Let's have a look with the slide closed. As you can see, the slide is closed. People often wonder, can you use these things with the slide closed? Well, you sure can. You can get into the washroom. You can access the galley. It's all accessible. Let's turn this around and have a look inside. So I'll show you that you can use the washroom with the slide closed in an 1150. It's not a big deal. It's a little, a little tight, but there's lots of room. You walk right into the camper, right into the coach. And there's lots of room in here to, to use the galley. You can sleep in here, use the table, use the washroom. When we first came home with it, we stopped in a Walmart and uh, 
Slept in it, used it that night. No problem with the slide in. These doors slide this way. So as you can see, it's no problem to get into the into the shower, into the washroom. It's accessible with the slide in. In case anyone's wondering. I've had people ask me that all the time. That's kind of why we bought this model instead of the 992. Originally when I bought the 990, I was thinking about which model to buy because I kind of like the style of the 992, but it's smaller water capacity and the fact that I don't think I can use the washroom in it or access much in the camper with the slide closed. It was eliminated from the list. Sometimes I'll throw a mountain bike up on the bed when we're traveling. So, and one in the back of the truck. Now that we're in here, I'll show you the interior of this camper. But the first thing I want to ask is, what do people do with this stuff that comes with these campers? You get comforter, two pillows, and it's made out of kind of a scritchy, itchy kind of material. You can't really sleep on it. It's dry clean only. How do you wash it? What do you do with it? I'm going to put it in garbage bags like I did with the 990 and throw it in the basement. And if I ever decide to sell the camper, maybe I'll use it to show the camper and, and that's it. If I could save a couple hundred bucks and not get this stuff to begin with, I'd like to do that. But if anybody else wonders why they include these things, please let me know in the comment section because I don't know what you do with this stuff and why do they include it? I'd rather save the money than have to deal with more bags of stuff. I'm going to put the slide out and show the inside of the camper now. I'll use the button on the floor here to put the slide out. Of course, it comes with a roll control for that too. That's hidden away in a drawer somewhere. Slide is out. Now, there is a lot of room. The floor in this camper is actually longer than the Bigfoot by about three or four inches. But the Bigfoot, I mean, was a huge camper too. It also was 11 feet long. With the 1150, the fridge is on the same side as the 990, but you gain a whole series of drawers and cupboards, a longer countertop, more floor room, and of course a dry bath. This was the big deal when we bought this camper was the dry bath. When I ordered my 990, I had something different in mind, but I think I'm gonna like using this dry bath. It's big and spacious. The shower is also big, gives more storage. The only issue is with this 1150, water leaks out right here along the bottom. And in order to stop the water leaking out of the shower, I had to actually put a thin layer of silicone all along the bottom here, from one end to the other. If anybody else has this problem, let me know in the comment section, because I don't know, did Arctic Fox drop the ball here? Why did, why did they leave such a gap between this curtain and the sill? It's, it's also the design of the curtain, I believe. And when water gets on it and you roll it up, it squishes the water out, water pours down inside the shower and outside the shower along this little gap right here. So I'm not sure how to stop that. I can't really silicone anything else. So if anybody has any suggestions, let me know. I'm not quite sure what Arctic Fox had in mind when they did that. Other than that, the bath is well designed. It's quite spacious. Same porcelain toilet, lots of cupboards and cabinetry, of course, vent and fan. And you also get a window instead of the usual blank wall with the fiberglass surrounding the 990. This time I ordered this step. It's debatable whether you need it or not. I thought, why not? It sure is a nice place to step on when you get out of the cab over at night. This step does work, and um, but if there's two people in bed, 
person on this side usually has to kind of wiggle over to the side to use that step if they want to use the step to get down. But this can go right in the middle and then you can use it to get in or out of the cab over. The cab over is essentially the same as the 990. Same overhead storage. It's all lit up at night. Same big cabinets on both sides. It's a massive cab over. Lots of headroom. I ordered the small TV again because I wanted these cabinets on this side. I'd rather have the extra cabinets and storage than have a larger TV sitting on a shelf. I don't usually watch a lot of TV, so it's wasted on me. I'd rather have the storage. You get a fantastic fan above the vent. That's the cover on it for now, or above the cab over. I got a vent cover order for it to keep the light to a minimum, so I'm not going to probably use that sun shield a lot. The LED lights are a little different now in the coach. The ones in the roof are the same. You still get the same high ceilings as the 990. These are really tall ceilings. I don't know how tall it is in here, but it, it feels huge with these high ceilings. And the nice engravings that are all around it. It's really quite stylish the way they've, they've done this. The hinges this year are also updated. They're all internal hinges now. No more external hinges. So it looks a lot sleeker, the cabinets do anyway. Stove is is updated too. It's got uh, kind of like a backlit control knobs and a nice glass top. The grate gray, gray underneath is also nicer. The backsplash I think has been downgraded. It's the same material as the countertops now. It's a nice material but I like the decorative mountain scene that was on it before. However this is probably more functional and these countertops are quite nice. And the table is the same color too so I like what they've done there. Same great big square sink, which I like. I have a different uh, charge controller this time because I ordered more solar for the roof and I'll show you that in a minute. Other than that, the controls are all the same. You get a radio, CD player, play your movies or whatnot. Same big fridge as the 990. These fridges are huge. Separate freezer. But these cabinets are all new to me. The 990 doesn't have the space because it's a foot and a half shorter. So I get these extra large cabinets and a bigger countertop than the 990 had. Other than that, the rest of it's the same except for the dry bath. These cushions are different now. I guess they'll be easier to wipe for families. Just a cloth back. I prefer the cloth on the bottom too, but I guess I'll get used to this. Somebody must have complained that they're too hard to clean up and now we got this. I got the thermal pane windows in this camper for winter use. I don't know if I'm ever going to have this thing out in the winter, but it's nice to order them and have them. I don't think Canadian dealers order these without, to tell you the truth. Everyone I've seen in Canada has these windows. Skylight is also a great source of light inside the coach, too. It's so bright I have to leave the shade closed all the time. But the windows really keep the, the coach cool because they're, they're quite tinted, quite dark. But the big game changer here for us is going to be this dry bath. Even a window. It's really a nice camper. It is just heavy, 5,400 pounds. I still can't get my head around that number, but it's only a couple hundred pounds heavier than the 990. Back outside. These campers are really tall. I think this thing is 12 and a half, maybe 1210 to the top of the air conditioner. And to get up and on top of the roof, they give you a, a good sturdy ladder. This year, the tubing is, is um, it's thicker it seems more sturdy than in 2019 anyway, at least as far as the diameter of the tubing goes. But it's a long way up. So we're going to go up on top here. I also ordered this grab rail here too. I think if you're going to get in and out of the camper, you need to have a grab rail to hang on to. Up we go.
here we are on top. That's the garage eaves trough. It's about a foot and a half lower from where I'm sitting here. It's a long way down. If you fall off one of these, you're gonna be falling a long way. So it's good to have a, a good sturdy ladder. They give you a good grab rail here too with the big black railing on top of the roof. Let's go look at that new solar panel I ordered. And here we are up top. And like I said, it is a long way down. 1150 comes with a max air vent cover on the back here, which I'm looking forward to using. The 990 never had such a thing. This is the enormous skylight that the bathroom shower has. It's a great addition. Still comes with a Coleman mock air conditioner. It's a lot bigger than the one in the 990. It's taller, probably has more capacity. Never used it a lot last time. This time, the wine guard antenna is a little different. Also ordered a Wi-Fi booster to make a signal stronger inside the coach. I imagine it's inside that thing. At least I think it is. I'll have to read up more on that. I haven't even set that up yet. Looking forward to seeing how that works out. This is the additional solar I ordered. Comes with this panel here. I believe it's a... a 40 or 60 this is what you get if you don't order additional i got additional panel here this time which should give me plenty of solar for what i need that's a bit different that little splitter here and the charge controller is also different and that's the dometic fantastic fan above the vent or above the cab over and i'm going to put a nice smoked cover on it or a dark tinted cover keep the light down also ordered slide out topper I believe this is essential when you camp in the mountains. I hate sweeping pine needles and branches off the top before I retract it. So it's a good addition for me. Long way down. 1150 holds 59 gallons worth of fresh water. People have asked me if I keep the tanks full when I'm traveling, and um, and we do keep the tanks full. I keep, I fill them up when I leave home, so I have a full load of water. It's, a, it's hundreds of pounds more weight. I'm not too concerned about that with the truck I have. So it does add, uh, add some weight to the truck. With fuel being two bucks a liter now in Canada, I might rethink that option, but it's nice having all the water on board. So no matter where we stop, you can clean up at night and cook and go on as normal for a few days anyway. Well, that's about all I have to say about this new camper. This weekend is its first trip out. Looking forward to that. It's quite dusty from sitting here for a few weeks now. It's going to be a big change over the old Bigfoot that we had. But if anybody is thinking about these large rock-type foxes, they're really nice. But you absolutely need, you need a dual rear wheel truck to hold it. This does not belong on a single rear wheel truck. Any one ton dually should be able to haul this thing. 19.5 inch wheels are, are nice to have though. I'm not gonna lie about that, especially when you're towing another 10,000 pounds. There's gonna be more updates on this in the future as we take it down to South Dakota next month. We're also traveling across Canada using a rooftop tent on top of a Ford Ranger. We're gonna hike the West Coast Trail. So I'm gonna put some videos up about that. If you wanna follow along, feel free. I'll be posting more videos regarding how this new camper works out. Thanks for watching.